video, I'm gonna take you through the step-by-step -step process that you need to follow in order to start your very first campaign in Google Ads. Now, if we've never met before, my name is Aaron Young, I'm from Define Digital Academy, and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. Now, the reason for why I love Google Ads is because I started my very first Google Ads campaign way back in 2010 to advertise my first business. And the reason for why I'm still passionate about Google Ads and that I'm still working in Google Ads every single day is because it works. And the reason for why I know Google Ads can work and why it can be the catalyst for success for your business is because, as I said, I see it happen time and time again. Now the one caveat that I do want to give there is that for success with Google Ads is that you do need to make sure that you're using the correct account and campaign structure and that you're also optimizing your Google Ads campaigns in the right way. And if you're not seeing success in Google Ads and you're one of those unfortunate horror stories where you've just wasted money on Google Ads, I can guarantee that the reason for why you're not seeing success would pretty much come down to one of those two reasons in that you're not using the right structure and that you're not optimizing your campaign in the correct way. But if this is your first go here in Google Ads or you're wanting to give Google Ads another try, you don't need to worry because I'm gonna be here every step of the process to show you how to start your very own Google Ads campaign and making sure that it's set up for success. Now, when it comes to Google Ads, I recommend that you start with a search campaign. And the reason for why I recommend that you start with a search campaign is for these reasons. And the first thing is, is it'll give you the most data on what are the keywords, so the user search terms, and what are the ad copies that convert best for your business. Now, there are other types of campaigns where you can test different types of keywords and different types of ad copies, but Google's original campaign, its search campaigns, it gives you the most data and the most options that you have for targeting your keywords and also doing split testing of your ad copies. And the second reason for why I recommend that you start with a Google search campaign is that it gives you the most control over the type of keywords that you wanna target and also the locations where you wanna target your ads. Google has a lot of different types of campaigns that you can use, but search is still the campaign where you have the most options for targeting around keywords and also targeting around different locations. And if you're new to Google Ads, it's quite likely that you're gonna be starting on a smaller budget. So that's why it's gonna be more successful with search so that you can really focus in on what's gonna be profitable for your business. And then the third and final reason for why I'm recommending that you start with a Google search campaign is because it teaches you the most about how Google Ads works. And if you can master search campaigns, you can then go through and master the other types of Google Ads search campaigns, whether it be display, shopping, or performance max. But search is gonna give you the greatest grounding in how Google Ads actually works and the different levers that you can pull when you need to scale or optimize your account. So with all of that said, let's get straight into a screen share because as I said, before we get into that step-by-step -step process of how to set up your very own search campaign in Google Ads, I do wanna take you through the correct structure that you need to use because if you don't have this correct structure down pat, you're not gonna be able to see success with Google Ads even if you've set up your account in the right way. So let's jump straight into a screen share right now. All right, so first we were talking about the Google Ads account. Now, your Google Ads account is an individual account that I'm gonna show you how you set it up in Google. And then underneath your individual Google Ads account, you have your different campaigns. Now, the way that we would structure this is that you have one Google Ads account for a different business. So if you're purely looking at Google Ads for your own business, you'll only need one Google Ads account. But if you are looking at managing Google Ads campaigns, campaigns for multiple businesses, that's where you would need to have an individual Google Ads account for each different business. And then in that one Google Ads account is where you have your different campaigns. Now, the reason for why you would have different campaigns is because if you wanna have different budgets or target different locations, and the reason for that is because we set our budgets and our location targeting at the campaign level. So let's just say that you had a business and you wanted to run a campaign in two different locations. So it was for the same, it was for the same services and products, but you wanted to run one campaign in Australia and then you wanted to have another campaign set up in Europe. And then potentially if you wanted to have another campaign set up in the US, so that would still all be in the same account, but you'd have your different campaigns targeting your different locations. 
And then underneath in each of those individual campaigns, you have your individual ad group. Let's just say, for example, you had a range of products and some were targeting men's products and some were targeting women's products. You could have these in the same campaign and then you'd have an ad group which would be targeting your male products and another group which would be targeting your female products. And the reason for that is because in each individual ad group, you have a selection of keywords that relates back to that ad group. And then from there, inside of this ad group, you also have your ad copies and your landing pages. Now, the reason for why this is so important to have this structure is, let's just say that someone was searching for men's t-shirts, it would then trigger the ad in the men's t-shirt ad group from that keyword and it would take them through to the landing page, which is most relevant to their search inquiry. Whereas if they were searching for women's t-shirts, it would trigger an ad in this ad group and then it would take them through to a woman's t-shirts landing page. And the reason for why that is so important is because for success with Google Ads, you always need to make sure that the ad copy and the landing page which you're using is highly relevant to the user's search term. So that's why you don't set up a campaign and just have all of your different keywords for all of your different products or services in the one ad group. You do need to have them broken out into different keyword theme based ad groups. So now that I've taken you through that important step of how you need to structure your Google Ads campaigns using those different ad groups, which are all based around individual keyword themes. So that would be one of your products or one of your different services. Remembering that the reason for that is that you wanna make sure that you structured your Google Ads account in this way that you're always triggering the most relevant ads and sending people to the most relevant landing page, which relates to the user's individual search inquiry. So with Google Ads, it's not best practice to only send people through to your homepage. You wanna be sending them through to the landing page on your website, which is most relevant to their initial search term. So now you're ready for me to take you through the step-by-step -step process in how to set up your very first campaign in Google Ads. Now, if you do miss any of these steps, do not worry because if you follow the link in the description below, you can get access to my free Google Ads campaign setup guide. And this has screenshots of all of the individual steps so that you don't don't miss any of these important steps. So let's get into that screen share right now. But as I said, don't worry if you miss a step because if you follow that link and download my campaign guide, you got a full resource that you can use on this step-by-step -step process. So right now, let's jump into that screen share and I can take you through this step-by-step -step process. All right, so let's get into this step-by-step -step process and how to set up your very own Google Ads campaign. And we're gonna be doing this for one of our businesses, which is a villa resort in Bali. And we're gonna be focusing on setting up a search campaign for our one bedroom villas in Seminyak. Remember how I showed you through that structure where you can have different different campaigns set around your different core product categories. And we're gonna be doing this for the one bedroom villa Seminyak. And then if we wanted to, we could come back and set up a secondary campaign for our two bedroom villa Seminyak. So where we need to go firstly, you can just do a Google search for Google ads. And then from there, you wanna to go to ads.google.com. And then you wanna go through and you wanna select start now. Now, if you already have a Google ads account, you can just go through and sign in. But if this is your first time, you can go start now. And also just make a note here as well that depending on which country you're in, you do get an initial credit. The way that this works is that when you start your first Google Ads account, they won't charge you for the first $600 in ad spend. So you get a starting voucher on your account. So then go through and click start now. And we wanna to go to a new Google Ads account. And then from there, you wanna go create new account. Now, when you see this screen, you don't wanna go create your first campaign. The reason for that is because that'll set up a Google Smart campaign. Whereas what we wanna do is we wanna be setting up a search campaign so that we've got more control over our keywords and our ad copy. And so that we've also got more data that we can use for our business. So we wanna go skip campaign creation. And then from there, it's just a matter of setting your billing country, your time zone and your currency. It is important to note that you can't change this after you've set up your Google Ads account. So whatever campaigns you put in this Google Ads account, it's gonna be the same billing country, time zones, and currency. If you're happy with those, go through and click continue. Now, because I've already got a payment profile, it pops up in here straight away. If you don't have a payment profile yet, you just need to go through and add in your credit card details. Obviously, I won't be doing that on this screen share, but it is a simple step-by-step -step process. And then from there, what you need to do is you'll get this screen, which is saying, congratulations, you're done, which means you've set up your Google Ads account. And now we need to go into explore your account. And then from there, we can start to set up our Google Ads campaign. 
Now you may come to a slightly different screen which will look more like this. And this is the new Google Ads dashboard and this is the existing Google Ads dashboard. What you need to do if you get the new Google Ads dashboard, you just need to click on this create campaign or this new campaign button. If you're in the old Google Ads dashboard or the current Google Ads dashboard, once again, you just press create or new campaign. You don't need to worry though, because regardless of which dashboard you get, these next steps that I show you are gonna be exactly the same. So let's go through and click new campaign. And now it comes to choosing your campaign objective. I recommend that you start with either sales or leads. If you're an e-commerce business, you would start with sales. If you're a service-based business and you're wanting to generate more inquiries, you would go to leads. And then it'll give you the different types of campaigns. Obviously, we wanna select search as I've discussed before. And then from there, you come through and you start to choose the different conversion actions. Now, if you go to my channel, I've got other videos on how to set up your conversion actions. If you've already got some conversion actions in your account, these will pop up here. But for this one, I'm just gonna select form web submissions on your website. And as it says, you'll get set up instructions in an email. So basically what will happen from there, once our account is set up, it'll send it through to our email that we use to set up this account. And then we come down and we wanna select our campaign name. Now, Google will give you just like a lead search one or it'll be a sales search one. I recommend that you use what I call a good naming convention. And the reason why that becomes important is because you wanna know what your campaign is doing or what it's targeting. So for this one, I would write one bedroom room and we'll just put in search. Now it doesn't matter what you call it. It just needs to be something that makes sense to you. You're going to be the only one that sees this campaign name. So for me, we know that it's a one bedroom villa and it's a search campaign. Then we go through and click continue. Because we don't have any conversion data in this account, I would start with clicks. And once you've got the clicks, we can then go through and click on next. And then it gives up some options for whether you want your ads to be included in different search partners. If you ever see these little question mark icons, if you just click on here, Google will give you a little bit of an explanation. Now, unless your campaign is in the US, I generally unselect this. Now, the reason for that is because your search partners are other sites like AOL. And it's only really the USA, which has a large percentage of search partners. I found all other countries, they don't really give too much data and there's, there's really no real cut through. For example, where I'm based in Australia, the vast majority of searches go through google.com. So you can add it, but I unselect it. One thing I am stronger on though, is I do deselect the display network. And the the reason for that is because a display network is your image-based ads. And if, if you wanna advertise on the display network, I always believe that it's better to have a specific display campaign with targeted images and targeted ad copy for those networks. Then from there, you wanna go through and select your locations. Now with your locations, you can tag this by country, city, state. You can even go down to postcodes or zip codes. But for here, we're just gonna be putting in a couple of our best performing locations. So we're gonna say Australia. We'll also put in the United Kingdom and we'll also put in the UAE. Now well, you can add more countries, but for the purpose of this example, I'm happy with those three. Then from there, when it comes into the location options, there's two options. There's presence or interest or presence only. Difference being is presence or interest is that's targeting people who are not only in your location, but show interest in your targeted locations. The reason for why I'm only selecting presence for this option is because we're marketing a product which is in Indonesia. So we only wanna be targeting people that are in those countries, not someone who's showing interest in Australia because obviously our destination product is in a different country. And then you wanna be targeting by your languages. The only thing I'd say with languages is that if you're gonna be running different language campaigns, so for example, English and French, I would separate them out into different campaigns. The reason for that is because Google does not translate your ad copy. So that's why you wanna be making sure that you've got English ads for your English search terms and your you know Spanish ads for Spanish search terms or French for French and so on. Now, when it comes to audiences, I do recommend that you add in about 20 to 30 audiences to start, but we're gonna be using the observation method. And what that means is that we're just getting this data. So Google let us know some different audiences and we can see the better performing audiences. And this is the type of data that we can then use in the future for some different display campaigns or performance max campaigns. So the way that you go through here is where obviously we've got Bali is our products. We're gonna be adding in some of these relevant audiences. Now these don't need to be exactly matched because remember we're just getting the data. So that's why I put some extra data in there. If things around beach and outdoor enthusiasts. You can also go into browse and this, who are they? Detailed demographics gives us some great data because that way we can actually see the type of people 
and we can help to build out the customer profile for who converts for our business. We will add to these audiences as we go on, but because we've already got about those 20 audiences to start, I'm happy with that. And then from here, we can go through to next. And this is where we start building out our individual ad group. Now, if you go back to my channel, I've got other videos on how I complete the keyword research. Or what you can do is if you wanted to, you can just go through and add this individual URL, paste it in here, and then you can get keyword suggestions. Now, I would recommend starting with about three or four broad match keywords, but what you'd be looking for is you wanting to have keywords which explain more what you're wanting to target. So things like large villas, luxury villas, villas for rent, you wanna get rid of those because they're just too broad. So what we'd be going for, and you just have a look, I actually don't like any of these keywords. So what I would be doing, and the biggest tip for how to complete your keyword research, as I said, I do have videos on this channel which takes you through the full process that I use, but I go through and use things things like this. Now, the reason for why I use broad match keywords which have more words in them is because it gives Google a greater context of the type of searches that we're wanting to target. As you could see before, when we had things like the keyword suggestions, Google was recommending things like large villas, Seminyak villas, and they're just too broad. Now, Google would eventually get the right data, but by adding in some more specific keywords, you're gonna be getting those results much, much quicker. And then from there, we need to go through and start creating our ads. Once again, if you follow me on this channel you can also see specific videos that I've got about creating your own ad copy but the way that you do this in again is that you would go through making sure you're picking the landing page which is most relevant to your search inquiry because we're focusing on one bedroom villas in Seminyak this is the landing page that we're going to be taking people to here and it's just a matter of going through and adding in your different headlines and your different descriptions now I'll go through and do this now so I've gone through and added in some different headlines and descriptions. And you can see in here, these are your headlines which appear here in blue, and these are your descriptions. Now, these are not headlines or descriptions that I would use. And as I said, if you go and have a look at my channel, I've got a full teaching on how to create the best ad copy for your business. But obviously I just wanted to take you through the step-by-step -step process in setting up your campaign. And then from there, you can also add in your site links. Now, site links are extra little bits of information which appear above your ad. And and this way you can direct them to different parts of your website. So let's just say that you have a deals page and then you'd put the URL in there. Or if you have a contact page, you might have a blog page. And then we also might wanna give them information about our two bedroom villas. You do need to go through and add in the individual URL. So for this one, if we wanted to, we could add the two bedroom URL. I would also add in a little bit of an extra description. For your blog, you would send them through to your blog URL. So you do have to go through and add in these extra details. So what I've done through here is I've gone through and I've added in some site links. So we've got the different URLs there. Now, as I said, if you haven't added this in yet, you can do this later. But what this does in here, you can see now that we've got these little site links which have appeared underneath our ad. And these are different areas that people can click and to go directly to our contact page or our two bedroom villas page, or as I said, your deals page. And also as well, you can also add in some different call outs. Once again, in my ad training video, I'll take you through all of this, but these are things which you can do at a later stage as well. Then once you've done that, you just go through and click next. And then it comes to setting your budget. Now, Google will overestimate massively because obviously they want you to spend more money. Now, when you set a custom budget, I know for these keywords that the average cost per click, so the average cost that it takes for people to click on an ad is about $3. You wanna go about 10 times what the average cost per click is, so that's why we would go to $30. It is important to remember that this is a daily budget which is then calculated monthly. So because you're setting this at $30 a day, it's letting Google know that you're willing to pay up to $900 a month. So because it's 30 times $30, if you wanted to spend $300 a month, you would set your budget at $10 a day. Then you go through and click next. And then from there, you can go through and click publish campaign. Now for me, obviously you're seeing these warnings because I haven't added in our credit card details, but I'll go through and do that after this video. So all you need to do is go through and press publish campaign. And congratulations, you've just published your first campaign in Google Ads. Now remember, as I said, if you miss any of those steps, make sure you follow that link in the description below so that you can get my campaign setup guide. And also remember that that is just the first step of the process because once you set up your Google Ads campaign, you need to make sure that you know how to optimize your campaign correctly. And if you wanna learn more about optimizing your Google Ads search campaign, all you need to do is to go through and watch this video right here. And you may remember in that video, I did talk about completing keyword research. If you wanna learn more about how to complete keyword research, go through and watch this video right here. Once again, thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next time. See ya.